Good afternoon, Redeemer family and everybody joining us on the internet around the world. Our devotion for this afternoon is based on the processional gospel for Palm Sunday. The processional gospel for Palm Sunday is Luke chapter 19, verses 29 to 40. Luke chapter 19, verses 29 to 40. When he drew near to Bethphage and Bethany at the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village in front of you, where, on entering, you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? You shall say this, The Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went away and found it just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, Why are you untying the colt? And they said, The Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus, and throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. And as he rode along, they spread their cloaks on the road. And as he was drawing near, already on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice, for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. This is a passage that is both filled with expectation, filled with joy, filled with hope, and also somewhat of a little bit of a confusion. The confusion might not be on our part on hearing it, but the confusion was definitely on the part of the people that were praising Jesus, and here's why. They were praising him well enough, which was good, but many thought that this was Jesus coming to take the the throne of Jerusalem, Jesus coming to move or uh, remove the Romans from the the kingdom, from, um, from Judea and from Galilee, and to recreate or create even better uh, the kingdom the way it was under Solomon. But, of course, that's what we, not what he was doing at all. Um, and then there came the opposition. The Pharisees shouting to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. And here's where we are today. Today we, we hear in many ways, shapes, and forms the critics and the Pharisees of our age and the naysayers of our age trying to silence God's church. The church is okay as long as it stands in its corner and isn't heard by the rest of the world. But the minute it speaks out, the minute it shouts praises, the minute it it proclaims, um, then they have issue. Then they want it silenced again. Then they want it back in its corner, back where they can't hear it. See, we live very much in this time and this is happening in so many places around the world. I don't know if you have that, the chance or take the time ever to look at the Voice of the Martyrs website and see all the different places around the world where the Christian church is under attack. Under attack, just like the Pharisees, trying to silence the message, trying to silence the Word of God. But Jesus' response is also profound. If these were silent, the very stones would cry out. And basically what Jesus is saying is that the Christian church will never be silenced and can never be silenced because it is the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Word that he is working through always to deliver the message 
of his love and salvation. Because after all, that's really the reason why he was entering Jerusalem. He wasn't coming in to establish an earthly kingdom. He wasn't coming in to you know, expel the Romans. He was coming in to overpower sin, overpower the devil, overpower the ways of this world. And he did that as he suffered and died on the cross. He sacrificed himself to destroy sin's power, to destroy the devil's power. And as far as the world is concerned, to give the message that there is a better way, a message of love, forgiveness, and salvation, a message of life. And that's what Jesus came to give. His suffering and death destroyed the power over man, a power of guilt and shame and sin. He destroys it. And as he rises from the grave, gives life to all his followers. And with that life and the fearlessness they gain because of that life, the church will not and cannot be silenced. We speak boldly, we speak courageously, we deliver the message of the gospel boldly and courageously because it is the truth, the truth that our Lord died, the truth that our Lord rose, the truth that our Lord saves us, the truth that he is our eternal king. And so we, with all of those there on that first Palm Sunday, should also shout and praise his name. Glory to God in the highest. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Please pray with me. Dear Lord Jesus, as we enter Holy Week, we begin by shouting, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he. And we pray that you would help us to recognize that a kingdom you came to establish, the spiritual, eternal kingdom of grace here on earth and the spiritual kingdom of glory in heaven. And as you came to fully establish these, so the gospel, the power of grace is to be proclaimed. It cannot and must not and will not be silenced. Strengthen us in our faith that we would indeed share that message, shout that message, proclaim that message, speak that message, be witnesses of that message, that your church might never be silenced, no matter what threat, no matter uh, what devious plot, that we may continue to proclaim the good news of Jesus our Savior. In his name, amen. Um, have a blessed week. We will see you on Monday uh, for Monday's devotion. Next week being Holy Week, we'll have a devotion on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So next week we will have a devotion on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Um, no devotion on Thursday as it's Monday, Thursday, or Holy Thursday. So I encourage you to uh, either you know, attend a worship service or you know, watch a worship service uh, streaming on live, online so that we can remember the night that Jesus was betrayed, the sacrament that Jesus instituted, the time in the Garden of Gethsemane, and the beginning of Jesus' suffering. Take time next week. Take time to be in God's house. Take time to hear his word. Take time to acknowledge the giver of our salvation. In Jesus' name, have a blessed Holy Week.